Every year at Convocation, UBC bestows honorary degrees upon individuals who, in the opinion of the university community, have fit the criteria of excellence and eminence in their chosen field. Patrick Lane is one such person, and I invite him now to step forward to receive his honorary degree. Madam Chancellor, it's in the context of this university's highest values, the pursuit of excellence, free inquiry, and the enhancement of our society that I am honored to cite the contributions of Patrick Lane, one of Canada's finest poets. Mr. Lane's career over the past 50 years has been a deeply personal journey, but one that he has shared widely through his prolific and profound work. Mr. Lane brings to the page an extremely rare combination of incisive observation, bold honesty, and an extraordinary facility with language that gives readers new, sometimes humbling, and often challenging ways to appreciate the human condition and the natural world around us. Mr. Lane has published more than 27 books of poetry, a book of short stories, and a memoir about his fight with alcohol and drug addiction. Among his great achievements is the highly acclaimed novel Red Dog, Red Dog, set right here in the Okanagan. After graduating from high school in Vernon, Mr. Lane tried his hand at several jobs, including logging and truck driving, before he chose a career in poetry. He's traveled extensively and lived in various parts of Canada, finally settling on Vancouver Island with his wife, poet Lorna Crozier, an award-winning poet in her own right. Mr. Lane has earned many of Canada's major literary awards for poetry, including the Governor General's Award, the Canadian Authors Association Award, and the CBC National Prize for Poetry. In 2007, he received British Columbia's highest literary honor, the Lieutenant Governor's Award for Literary Excellence. Mr. Lane is known as a brilliant teacher and a tireless mentor, nurturing many new writers. Madam Chancellor, for his significant contributions to the literary life of Canada, I ask you to confer the degree of Doctor of Letters Honoris Causa upon Patrick Lane. By the authority of the Okanagan Senate of this university, I confer upon you, Patrick Lane, the title and degree Doctor of Letters, honoris causa. It now gives me great pleasure to ask Dr. Lane to say a few words.
Wow. All my beets didn't grow in my garden. <laughs> Two rows and they didn't grow. Madam Chancellor, President, all of the hierarchical dignitaries who are sitting here today on this stage and elsewhere, all of you remarkable young people, distinguished guests, faculty, graduates, families, friends, it's an honor to be asked to address you today and to thank you too for honoring me with the doctorate. Back in early December of 1958, I was 19 years old, living with my wife and baby boy in a two-room apple picker's shack a few miles down the road from here. I had a job driving dump truck for a two-bit outfit that was working on a short stretch of highway just down the hill from where this university uh, was built so many years later. I remember leaving the shack and walking out to stand by the highway in the wind and snow. I stood there, shivering in my canvas coat as I waited to be picked up by the grader operator in his rusted pickup truck. The sky was hard and gray. Its only gift that winter day was ice disguised as a fragile, bitter snow. <clears throat> as I stood there in the false dawn, I looked up for a moment, and as I did, an iridescent blue butterfly the size of my palm fluttered down and rested on the sleeve of my coat just above my wrist. It was winter, it was cold, and I knew the Okanagan Valley where I had lived most of my young life did not harbor huge, shiny blue butterflies, not even in summer. I remember stripping off my gloves and cupping the insect in my hands, lifting that exquisite creature to the warmth of my mouth in the hope that I could save it from the cold. I breathed upon the butterfly with the helplessness we all have when we are faced with an impossible and inevitable death, be it quail or crow, gopher, hawk, child or dog. I cupped that delicate butterfly in the hollow of my hands and I ran back to the picker's shack in the hope that somehow the warmth from the morning fire in the wood stove might save it. But when I reached the door and opened my hands, the butterfly died. I do not know now what strange Santa Ana, Squamish, or Sirocco jet stream wind blew that sapphire butterfly from far off Mexico, the Congo, or the Philippines to this valley. I only know the butterfly found its last moments in my hands. I have never forgotten it, and I know the encounter changed me. There are mornings in our lives when beauty falls into our hands, and when that happens, we must do what we can to nurture and protect it. That we sometimes fail must never preclude our striving. The day the beautiful creature died in my hands, I looked up into the dome of the hard, cold sky, and I swore to whatever great spirit resided up there in the dark clouds that I would live my life to the full, and above all, I would treasure beauty. I swore, too, that I'd believe in honesty, faithfulness, love, and truth. The words I spoke were huge abstractions, the ones the young sometimes use, but I promised them to myself and now, more than half a century later, I stand here in front of your young minds, your creative spirits, your beautiful lives, and I can tell you that I have tried. I told myself that year and in the subsequent years in the sawmill crews and construction gangs I worked with that I would become a writer, a poet, a man who would create an imagined world out of the world I lived in, that I would witness my life and the lives of the others I knew with words. The years went by, filled with the tragedies and losses that all our lives are filled with. My brother's early death, my father's murder, my divorce, the loss of my children did not change the promises I made. And there were times, too, I lived a dissolute, irresponsible and destructive life. 
There were times, too, when I was depressed and wretched. But I continued to believe, in spite of my weaknesses and fears, I wandered the world, and as I did, I wrote of the lives that shared my times. And I wrote of this Okanagan Valley, its lakes and hills, its stones, cacti, cutthroat trout, magpies, rattlesnakes, and yes, its butterflies. What I've told you is a story. It arose from my life, for where else but from a life can a story come? What I promise each of you is that there will come a day or night, a morning or an evening, when something as rare and fine as the blue sapphire butterfly will fall into your hands from a cold sky. A fearful child will climb into your bed and cleave to you. A woman or a man will weep, will laugh, will sleep with you in the sure belief that the one they abide with is governed by a good and honest love. No matter the degrees you have earned and the knowledge you have accumulated, remember to believe in yourselves and to believe in each other. In a world as fearful as our present one, I ask that you not be afraid. Today is merely an hour. Remember in the time ahead of you to hold out your hands so that beauty may fall safely into them and find a place, however briefly, to rest. Thank you.